So, how are you guys doing? Have you guys actually uh, got the chance to check out the Grammys last week? I think it was like last week, Sunday. Um, I've seen the highlights on the web. I, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, I don't watch much TV, you know, and um, I'm a person who used, you know, Roku and Smart TV and stuff like that. So, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have the actual channel where the Grammys was being broadcast, but I did get to see it on the web because, you know, Anything that's on KB, you can basically watch it on the internet these days. So, um, I did watch some of the Grammys. I've seen a lot of the performances and things of that nature. Uh, and I really just want to highlight the winners. And also just discuss the bias of the Grammys and how um, it has been, you know, basically has grown a negative reputation amongst artists of basically, you know, people wanting to boycott because of their decisions that they made in regards to um, artists they've decided to award. Um, also, you know, potential you know, accusations of racism amongst the um, board voters or whoever's running the committee over at the Grammys. Uh, you got people like The Weeknd who decided to withdraw themselves from making submissions to the Grammys uh, because he felt like he was getting snubbed because of his most recent project, you know, and, you know, it was a lot of chatter and, and drama going around because people were saying, oh, Beyonce decided not to perform. And they gave off this, um, gave off this perception in the media that, uh, Beyonce was snubbing the Grammys and wasn't going to be there, but surprisingly, Beyonce showed up. And we're not sure if she showed up because uh, she won a few Grammys herself. She won like four Grammys um, if she showed up to support Megan Thee Stallion, who she did a collaboration with, but Beyonce did not want to perform. And um, because Beyonce decided not to perform, of course, the media took it. <laughs> you know how we do. We take things and we run with it. So everybody was trying to make it seem like Beyonce wasn't going to be at the award show. But lo and behold, you know, the Carters, Jay-Z and Beyonce showed up to the Grammys fashionably late. And Beyonce was there with Megan Thee Stallion as they accepted their award for, I think, the best rap song. They won best rap song, best rap performance. And then Megan Thee Stallion won best new artist. And then Beyonce also won an award for her song, Brown Skin Girl, with her daughter, Blue Ivy. And, you know, she went out and did the acceptance speech. So I think, you know, it was a lot of wins for the Carters. And also, Beyonce basically broke a record for the most Grammys awarded to a singer. Um, and she's up there on the ranks with Quincy Jones when it comes to Grammys at this point. Uh, because, of course, Quincy Jones has, I think Quincy Jones has 28 Grammys. And Beyonce just tied with Quincy Jones. And Beyonce is still relatively young. So there is, you know, a strong possibility that she will surpass the amount of Grammys Quincy Jones has won in his lifetime. And, you know, big up to that legend Quincy Jones, you know. Um, but I'm just wondering, will will Beyonce ever get that Album of the Year award that she's always denied, you know what I mean? And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people, like critics and spectators and artists alike, have decided to, like, boycott the Grammys because they feel like, you know, a lot of times, you know, it is, like, racially motivated and they um, don't get the awards to... Um, certain artists because of their ethnicity or they try to separate uh, performers based off of their their race and ethnicity and you know you know it's just a lot of accusations of discrimination and racism within the Grammy committee and a lot of people basically are fed up you know we've had that time you know where there was a list of artists boycotting the Grammys you know um, of course, one of the biggest ones this year has been The Weeknd. He, like I said, The Weeknd, he decided not to attend the Grammys himself because he felt like uh, the Grammys weren't, you know, I guess, um, uh, support, supporting him, promoting him, or awarding him like he's supposed to, or he felt he should have been awarded, so they pulled out, you know. And it's just been this big old, like, racial uproar with the Grammys and how they've treated musicians and everything else. I don't know. Um, I do feel like there is some bias um in regards to the current grammy committee over the past like 10 15 years in regards to how they uh awarded people however there is a history of the grammys um snubbing people who they feel you know most of the people in the general public feel should not be snubbed when it comes to awards so you know i do wonder sometimes who is the person in charge of the grammy committee is there like a serious board of people is there like 20 people voting and saying okay this person deserves this award this person deserves that award or is there like three old you know old old people that's just sitting at a table you know just you know pulling shit out of a hat and it's not based off of i mean i mean even coming down to the nominations i'm just like you know some of the nominations i'm like how did they get nominated and you know it's just, it's just makes you think and wonder like what is the actual protocol 
when it comes to being a part of the Grammy committee and how are they selecting people that they nominate and how are they selecting the people that they win? A lot of people view, view it as a popularity contest and you know I think it would be less you know drama uh, and, and stuff like that if they actually let the people vote who deserve a Grammy but since the Grammys is held at such a high stature they're basically saying that it's people that's on the committee who's our peers of musicians, people who are actual musicians voting and saying yes this person deserves a Grammy, this person has um, you know, past all of these different um, levels in their career in regards to their music and compared to this other person's record, it makes them more uh, worthy of award. But long story short, let's talk about the awards that was uh, given out and who received them, okay? And I'm going to talk, highlight um, basically the, the urban section and stuff like that, the main awards basically, because I mean, there's like 30, I don't know how many awards, it's like 50 Grammys they give out, 100 Grammys, um, because there's so many different genres of music, but the winner of the main award, Billie Eilish won um, everything I, I wanted for. But yeah, so let's just talk about the main awards or whatever. And uh, record of the year went to Billie Eilish uh, for everything I wanted. Um, album of the year went to uh, Taylor Swift uh, for her album Folklore. The song of the year went to her, which is an R&B singer. We really big up to the R&B girls. I feel like the R&B girls are doing it better than R&B boys these days. Um, you know, but that's just me. I feel like the women are stepping out this year. I Can't Breathe, okay? Um, that's the name of the song that um, she won for song of the year. Her. She. Her. Okay, her. Okay. And then we got Best New Artist Award went to Megan Thee Stallion. And she was in competition with the likes of Chica, Doja Cat, um, uh, Katrinana, and a few other people I, I really don't know. <laughs> uh, pop Solo Performance uh, went to Harry Styles, Watermelon Sugar. I, I really don't know who that is. Um, I, don't, I don't really follow him. Look, I don't know if I'm getting old or anything. Maybe I am aging out of the Grammys because some of these people I have no clue who they are that's nominated. I'm just like, hey, well, okay. Oh, Jason, Justin Bieber got a nomination for the song Yummy. Oh, that's pop, pop solo performance. He's one of the nominees and he lost to him. Um, Best pop duo group performance. The winners were Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande for Rain On Me. Um, <clears throat> American Standard and James Tyler uh, was Best Pop Vocal Album. Best pop vocal, oh, that's best pop vocal traditional album. Then best pop vocal went to Dua Lipa, Future Nostalgia. Okay, uh, best dance record went to ten, went to uh, Katrina, uh for ten percent. Okay, and and then uh, Katrina won another award um, for best dance electronic album. And it goes on and on and on. Listen, it, it's so many words I was giving out, but really, um, the ones I care about was like best R&B performance, which actually went to Beyonce uh, for Black Parade. Um, also, best traditional R&B performance went to Let Us See Anything for You. And this was just long overdue. Like, Let Us See should have been won an award. I think she was nominated like 13 times before she finally won this award. And like, to me, I would get irritated because I feel like they would have Let Us See in there just as a filler, just to play with her emotions every freaking year. And this year, she finally got the award that she deserved. And I'm not saying that she didn't deserve the other nominations, but it's like, why? I hate when the Grammys nominate somebody like 30 times, you know what I mean? Just to play with their their feelings and shit, and then not give them an award. I'm like, come on, you know? Like, why does this lady don't have like seven awards or five, two, three by now? This, literally, she was nominated about 14 times. She finally won. Okay, and then... Big up to her. She really deserved that award, though. Uh, best R&B song went to Better Better Than I Imagine. Uh, that's the song. It was by Robert um, Glasper and her. Her then won another award. Um, and Michelle Noji Shelley. Oh, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Anyways. And then um, the nominees in that category was Beyonce for Black Parade. Uh, Tiana, Major 9, and Earth Gang for Collide. And then Chloe and Holly was also nominated for the song Do It. And then we got Skip Marley and her Slow Down was also nominated. So her was nominated two times in one category. Um, and then we have Best Progressive R&B Album that went to Thundercat. 
it is what it is. The nominees in that category was uh, Janae Oko. Um, Janae Oko. I hope I pronounced her name. <laughs> Chloe and Holly uh, for Ungodly Hour. That was a really, really good album. Free Nationals, the self titled album, Free Nationals, and Robert Glasper, F Yo Feelings. So, you know, honestly, between me and you, I really don't listen to Thundercat. I don't know if he's, his album was better than Chloe and Holly. But what I do know is I did download Chloe and Holly's album, and that drink was on point, okay? And I feel like they deserved that award, um, at least one of those two, three nominations that they got. But unfortunately, they didn't win. Any of them, you know, and Chloe was a good sport and Holly was a good sport on social media, basically um, showing off their red carpet attire. Because I don't know if they actually went to the awards. I think they virtually attended or something like that. Um, but unfortunately, they lost. But they were still happy about being nominated. I'm glad for them because I feel like um, if they keep on putting together the music that they've been putting together times 20, hopefully they will actually win a Grammy. Uh, but honestly, I don't feel like they should feel any type of way for not winning a Grammy because the Grammys aren't everything. You know, it is, it's, you know, it's a great thing to win, but I mean, based on the history of the Grammys, if I was an artist, I wouldn't be offended if I didn't win. Like, it's just, we already know what the propaganda is surrounding that and the politics surrounding that. So, yeah. And the next thing, John Legend won Best R&B Album. And he went up against Gregory Porter, Givion, um, Ant Clemens, and Luke James. And I, I think, yeah, I think they got it right with that. But dang, I just feel like the male R&B category just needs to get a little bit bigger and better. What happened to all the other R&B people from back in the day, the R&B singers, men singers? I don't know. Okay. Um, it's a lot of people that I miss that's not in that category. Um, and then Best Rap Performance went to, of course, that was one of Megan Thee Stallion's and Beyonce's Grammys, uh, Savage one. Um, Best Melodic Rap went to Anderson Pack. Have you guys checked out Anderson Pack and, um, Bruno Mars' new group, Silk Sonic? That's the, that's them together, as they call it, group Silk Sonic. They got their new song, um, I think it's called Leave the Door Open. That's a really, really good song, and it's actually number two on the Billboard charts right now. Um, I'm looking forward to the album. Bruno Mars uh, said that he has Boosie Countless involved in helping to get the production done. And, you know, Bruno Mars is always under fire because everybody feels like he's like a culture vulture. You know, they, you know, but he basically responded to the Breakfast Club and basically was trying to um, discuss being called a culture vulture. And him saying that he's not a culture vulture because he's actually um, embracing other black um, entertainers and he acknowledged where he gets, um, a lot of his, you know, I, I mean, a lot of his ideas from and where he borrowed or, um, samples some of his material from, he likes to fully acknowledge those people and, um, give shout outs to the people who came before him. So he feel like that makes him not be a culture vulture because of that. Um, yeah, so y'all comment below on that. What do y'all think? Uh, Bruno Mars is a culture vulture and or do you guys just think he's just an honest performer? I mean, he's been performing and doing um, Impersonations of performers since he was like a little little kid um, I think he was an Elvis impersonator when he used to live wherever he came from whatever So I mean he's known for that and I, I he just uh, incorporated his artistry So I don't know if I consider him a culture vulture y'all tell me and then um did we say Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce won another Grammy together? Best rap song. And this is interesting. What was the history since the last time a female won best rap song? Did Cardi won? No, I don't think Cardi won. Did Cardi win that? Because I know Cardi had won like two Grammys, right? How many Grammys did Cardi B win? But anyway, Megan had a good night. She won her Grammys. And, and and then we got Nas finally winning his first Grammy. And this is the thing about the Grammys that pissed people off. Because it's like... <sighs> we got Megan Thee Stallion coming out, jumping out the gate, and she get three Grammys. And meanwhile, Nas, <laughs> a legend who's been out for almost 30 years, just got his first Grammy. Like, for Best Rap Album. And it's been how many albums has he put out, man? Like... I mean, it's, I think he done put out at least 10 albums right now. And he's just now getting his award. That's the stuff that Grammys be on. You know, it just like, it's like, okay. We're going to nominate you 25 times. The same way they did Let Us See. Okay, well, let's go ahead and just give it to him. You know, 
And honestly, I don't think um, Nas even really had no stiff competition. You know, um, I feel like he deserved it. You know what I mean? But the one thing I did notice too is that um, a lot of people didn't even know Nas had an album out. I've seen people saying, Nas dropped an album, this, this, and this. But it's like, just because you don't know about the album, it don't mean it can't be nominated. Like, all you gotta do is come up with some music, I guess, if you got like a record deal, whatever, whatever. And you submit it to that, the Grammys committee, and it don't have anything to do with the record sales. It comes down to the committee. And they decide, you know, okay, whether this is Grammy worthy or Grammy nomination worthy or not. You know what I'm saying? So, we got to Nas for winning that. And, um, overall, I mean, I've seen a couple of performances. I see a lot of people going after Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion for their performance. And, uh, Cardi B's been on social media basically coming back at people saying, you know, you know, you're in control in control of what your children watch. If you guys have a problem with her performance and Megan Thee Stallion, you need to pay attention to your kids. And, you know, and, you know, that is true and stuff like that. But I also feel like, um, there is certain times and places. But, but you know, the Grammys didn't come on until mad late. So, yeah, I thought maybe the parents should have just watched what their kids are watching. But, I mean, everything is on the web these days. So, should a kid just not have a cell phone? Should a kid just not have a tablet? Because, um, they are risque you know, XXX performances going on the Grammys. I, I don't know. Like, who's to blame if your child is watching Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion um, perform together on the Grammys in, in a matter that's viewed as inappropriate? Um, who's responsible for keeping a child away from seeing something like that? You know, is it really their fault or is it, like, the parents' fault for not parenting? Like, you're, you don't want to pay the cable bill last time I checked. You don't want your kids watching that. Well, maybe you should not have let them have a TV in their room. Maybe it should be some monitoring on that. And maybe they shouldn't have a, a, a cell phone. And if they do got a cell phone, maybe you should have parental control on it so they wouldn't be able to get into certain videos that's inappropriate not for children. You know, so, I mean, Cardi do have a point. You know, Cardi does have a point with that. Um... What other performances? Of course, Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. They did their little Silk Sonic thing, and it was it was dope. You know, um, their voice is on point for sure. Um, you know what else has happened? And I don't know if you guys heard about this. And we're just gonna talk about music real quick since we're on a Grammys. I want to talk about the subject of.